Uh, happy belated Halloween. I'm going to go over a few tips and tricks for doing elevations when we've got colored cabinets. I'm going to just uh, show you that I've got a rendering here and it's utilizing a particular material I've built to create this cabinet color. Now this cabinet color is actually going to change a little bit. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to do a, um, a change in plan mode, which means it's going to change any materials, anywhere that this material is applied on any objects, it's changing it throughout the plan, all right? And this particular material takes some kind of base cabinet color and blends with it, all right? And that base cabinet color is a really dark brown. Now, the blend with texture is where I'm getting this blue color from, and I actually want more of like a lighter teal color is what this is gonna end up being. Um, so I'll play around with this. Maybe I actually have the color values, so I could punch that into the RGB color values here. But let me just press OK. We're going to see the rendering change. There we go. Now, what happens when I want to do a color elevation to kind of distinguish things so that we can see that this is this wood cabinet in the middle of this these other uh, cabinet pieces? How do we fade this out? Can we even fade this out, right? And so one thing that we could do is we could turn off colors, but that kind of doesn't help us in the case that now we're looking at this color elevation and that center cabinet, it's not really clear that it's supposed to be some kind of wood finish cabinet. Well, could we change the rendering modes? I mean, we could, I'm gonna double click in my rendering technique options and we can play around with um, glass house, technical illustration, maybe watercolor, hand-drawn lines, duotone, None of these really help that situation, right? It's still pretty difficult to distinguish that color on the walls. And do we need that color to be represented as a true color or can we kind of get away with lessening that color value in a way so that this looks a little bit more appropriate in our elevation, but a little bit different in our 3D rendering, right? So it's accurate in 3D rendering, but readable in some kind of elevation. What can we do? We can try using the depth cue. So use depth cue. Ah, that gets me a little bit here, that fog color overlaid, right? Um, so we get to start, change that start and stop value and change what that fog color is and how much fog there is. But notice that not only is this overlaying on the colors, but it's also overlaying on our vector lines, which are our dark black lines that really help distinguish everything here. So I don't think that's very helpful either. It's kind of the same method as just throwing on some kind of polyline, putting some fill to this polyline like a solid, and then changing the transparency of that fill. It's just going to cover up this stuff. So it's not a great method either. So there is something that we can do and it requires some kind of outside editor. So I'm gonna use my adjust materials tool, which I call the rainbow bacon tool, and I'm gonna pick up whatever this color is. So my RGB value is 4296.112. And I have to remember that somehow. Might be helpful to just take a screenshot of this real quick, press okay, and then paste this back into the scene just as a picture. And we're gonna turn off that pictures layer and let's just move this over so that we just have a reference, right? So it's a quick reference so I can see those RGB values. Then I'm going to fire up a photo editor. But before I do that, I want to use that material picker tool one more time. And I'm actually going to locate this on my machine. Now, I use my own textures, right? So, and in my preferences, and I'll just show you where this is, but in my edit preferences, or in the case of a Mac, you're going to hit that chief architect preferences. I, in my file management sub panel of general panel, down at the bottom under auto copy files section, I have copy externally referenced material files to my data folder unchecked. There's a reason for that specifically for me, and this may change in X17 when they introduce our cloud service. But the reason I have that unchecked is by default, when you import some kind of material, you're messing around with materials. Let me just bring up my file explorer here. I'm gonna get into the default directory for Chief Architect. By default, if I bring some material in, it's going to autom or bring an object in, it's gonna automatically bring that into where my data is located. Actually, I've relocated my data so that it's not constantly syncing. So I have Chief Architect Sync, X16, 
And then under textures, this is where it brings that data in, import data, material data, etc. All right. I have mine unchecked so that it's easy for me to copy paste my path and manage my materials in an outside location. So this is kind of a sidebar. For you, if you're using one of Chief Architect's materials, what you're gonna see here is a .zip archive. And what you could do is highlight that thing. It's actually gonna say pound zip. You're gonna highlight everything past .zip, delete that, copy the leftover file, and then be able to open up the zip archive and try to locate that source file. That's a trick that I go over in VIP in my paid membership area. Um, but I kind of gave you the, the roadmap for that, which is that you can get into the zip archive that contains your source files. Uh, there is a way to do that. For me, I get to just highlight all this, control A or command A, control C or command C, copy that, open up Photoshop, Control O to open. I can just paste it into the file name, press open, and now I'm opening that file. Very cool. And because I'm, I know my stuff in Photoshop, I'm very, you know, experienced in this software, and my face is kind of blocking my side layer here. Let me switch sides here so we can kind of see, is I'm going to add a adjustment layer that is a hue saturation adjustment layer set to colorize. And that colorize is where I could come in and try to target a, um, an RGB value. But we'll see here that as I change lightness and saturation, I can actually get this to that color value that I'm looking for. Now, something to note, the grain is, gets kind of washed out. It's very similar to what happens in Chief Architect. Well, I want to just double click on this layer and it's going to bring me to layer styles. Now layer styles, this is where I have the ability to make sure that this color isn't quite affecting the blacks of the underlying layer. Now notice those blacks are way too heavy and they're pixelated, but if I hold alt, I can split that and fade that effect back and then kind of mess with this first marker to get it to right where I want it, okay? There we go. And then the last thing that I might do is that I might change the opacity of this or the blend mode of this might be something that I can do as well if I really want that grain to show through. Now I actually don't need that grain to show through all that much so I'm going to adjust this back down a little bit more. There we go, something like that. Now what I could do is I could save and overwrite the existing file but I, I don't want to do that. I want to save this as a new file so I'm going to actually do control alt shift w. I'm going to uncheck transparency, leave this as a PNG file and I do want to come back to chief and note the location of this which is in my materials folder under wood oak cabinets all right so to come back to here get to my source materials file and this is just how I organize my file and so somewhere in here and what did we say it was it's at oak cabinet under wood oak cabinet so I can actually just type in oak and it's going to get me to oak cabinet and so I will save this as Oak Cabinet 3 in this case. Why not? Or I can save it as Teal if I wanted to. So that back in Chief Architect, and I'm, I didn't quite take the time to get this color right, but I'm going to uncheck Blend with Texture in this case because I'm replacing the source, and the source itself is, in fact, it carries that color data with it. So I'll show you why this is impactful. Here we go, we're gonna get into this. We'll find that same thing, O cabinet. Find that file, bam. Now, in the pattern panel, this is where I get to lighten how strong this color is. So I'm still showing it as some kind of a blue, but it's a very light blue, and we'll see what happens. Look how much more readable this is, but, in terms of the rendering, if I got that color right, the color is still that darker color, but I can change the brightness of this in that pattern color, all right? Which makes this a far more readable document. So that's the whole point of this video. It's kind of a trick so that you have a distinguishable set of parameters that you can you know, keep lightening this material color so that you still have a color elevation when you're utilizing some kind of dark material color. 
hope that helps you out. That's kind of a long video. This would be an example of a video that I might have in my membership zone. So in case you're wondering about that, we've got so many hours of content in there and I go over more advanced things like this that will really help your documents and improve your overall workflow, especially when you wanna do gorgeous looking color renderings and color elevations and have a, a plan set that really stands out.